Now this is the Uden Cup. Never heard of it? Maybe it's time you did. This, this is special. This is the world's first knockout football trophy. It dates back to 1867 when the final of this, the Uden Cup, was staged almost on this very spot. We're at Bramall Lane, uh, the world's oldest professional ground still in use. And it was here that Hallam FC won this trophy. But this trophy itself is the reason why we're here today, because it was sponsored by the founder of the Uden Cup, the man who bears the name of the trophy, Tommy Uden, actually known at the time as Thomas. And we're here with one of Thomas Uden's descendants, Dr. Glyn Uden. We're here to talk about a great character. They say the characters have gone out of football by the standards of Tommy Uden. That's probably correct, isn't it? Uh, I think probably you're right. Um, when you start to look at what he did from a standing start, so to speak, it's quite remarkable that somebody who started life as a, as a labourer uh, when he was 16 or 18 should turn into the, uh, an entrepreneur, if you like, and conceive the idea of, uh, of organising a football competition with a, with a cup at the end of it, and all the things that we can sort of recognise today, but when he did it, there was no precedent, so it was, it must have taken quite a bit of doing to actually conceive the idea and then implement it and, and, and have a successful football competition, I think. The founder of Cup Football and yet, at the time, he, he can have had no concept of that, can he? No, he, he couldn't have. And I often think, when I, when I look at the cup and photographs of it, uh, it's very, very ornate, uh, very detailed and very appropriate, if you like. Today, we're used to seeing cups w with uh, embellishments and all those wonderful things. But to go from having nothing at all to something that resembles today's uh, prizes, shall we say. I think that is really re remarkable. There's a great story in the, in the trophy itself uh, and the way it came to be, isn't there? Uh, well, I think what you're referring to probably is that uh, he'd, uh, having had the idea and got things organised, he'd, he'd uh, placed the order for a cup. Now, to the best of my knowledge, we don't know exactly what the cup would have looked like, but he commissioned it to be, to be ready uh, for the final of this competition and it wasn't ready so he not deterred he went and bought another one something that he thought was appropriate which is the one we we see today and somehow i think it fits the bill really well it's unique and uh, i think very uh, appropriate so from uh, the position of having nothing to present to having this wonderful little cup. I think it's a remarkable story. We don't know what he paid for it, but it must have been quite a substantial amount because, I mean, this is silver with some gold. I think, I think it would have been because it is solid silver and with uh, um, gold, I don't know whether it's plating in those days, but with, with, with gold internally, so uh, presumably so you don't need to clean it. <laughs> and uh, so it's very, very elaborate. Uh, I think would have been quite expensive I, I imagine but I don't think he would have uh, had much difficulty in paying whatever he thought he needed to pay because he had been a very generous benefactor in, in his uh, in his life in, in other ways so uh, yeah we don't know what it cost but uh, I don't think uh, it would have put him off no matter what the cost was really within reason of course. Mm. And despite being a wealthy man, he was, he was a philanthropist, wasn't he? He backed so many good causes. He did. Uh, I'm trying to make a list of them, but I think it's, uh, it's almost never-ending. You, you think you've got found everything and then something else c comes along. So uh, he donated money to good causes. Uh, for example, in the, in the floods of Sheffield, which killed, I think, 120 people or so. Or, um, he donated 200 or 300 pounds to that, along with other businesses uh, in, the, in the Sheffield area. 
I mean, he was above all a big personality, and he made a big cake. I mean, when I say a big <laughs> cake, in one of his <laughs> fundraising efforts, well, that was that was, some, was four tons, wasn't it? Well, that was something I only found about found out about a lot later. Uh, this enormous cake hadn't featured in my research, but uh, I, I now know that that was the case. And, and I think with ten thousand eggs, and uh, it must have required a huge, a huge contraption to pull it along through the streets of Sheffield. I, I don't actually know the outcome of that, whether it, uh, whether it all was successful or not. But uh, uh, it didn't seem to bother him. He, he, he wouldn't. Uh, uh, he would try to carry out things that he'd got an idea about yeah. and he wouldn't be put off, I think. He seemed as though he would, he would plough on and uh, try to get things done. Well, Tommy was very much in the entertainment business, wasn't he? He was an impresario of the theatre, uh, he, he put sh uh, musical entertainment, uh, circus-type entertainment yeah. as well. So it was Sheffield, music and football, mm. music hall, mm. music yeah. ball, even yeah. thanks, to, <laughs> thanks right. to Tommy. Yes, and. Uh, I think it's, he started uh, obviously in a small way in that he, I think he had uh, licensed um, ale houses. I think they were called right. in those days. He did fall foul of some of the some of the uh, legal niceties. I think in those days, but uh, started with uh, um, selling I think ales and what have you, and then bought a pub of some sort. I think, and then from there into theatres and as you say eventually one of the largest theatres in Britain I understand it was uh, the the Surrey uh, theatre was um, held something like 3,000 people with balconies and uh, a very the largest building in Sheffield and uh, also as you rightly referred to there were times when he, he had uh, circus acts as part of the entertainment Sounds strange today to think of having bears and things in inside theatres and buildings, but I think that's what they did in in Victorian times. So he was very much at the forefront of developing uh, theatres and theatre-related activities. Um, Do you think he was a, a football enthusiast or football as it was then mm, under Sheffield, the original Sheffield rules, or well, did he simply back it because people were becoming I think, uh, um, excited by it? My opinion really is it, it, he was very much a visionary and I think he seemed to have got the knack of getting involved in things which uh, were beneficial to the, to the community but also beneficial to him in earning money. Uh, I think. Uh, Why did he not continue with it then? Because 3,000 people, which would have been a lot of people uh, then, came to the first final, the final of the Uden Cup, at this very place where we're talking here at uh, Bramall Lane. Well, I, I think that, that the theatre here, I think it was larger than the, one in, than the ones in London. It was a very, very impressive affair. And uh, when you think that uh, out of his involvement in in entertainment and, and so on, to have organised what clearly was a successful football competition with 3,000 people um, at the ground, at this ground actually, yeah. <laughs> um, and 3,000 people at three pence a time, no doubt he charged for, <laughs> would have charged for beer maybe? Refreshments, that was like that. Refreshments say, yes. of some sort, yeah. I don't know. But you would have thought if it was so successful, it, why didn't he repeat it? Why didn't he do it again? But still, he I made a huge impact just know. doing it that one, that one I imagine, time. I imagine so. Uh, as a descendant of, of, of Tommy Uden, how, how proud are you of, of his legacy and the family's well, heritage? I, I, I'm, th there are times when I, over the years when I've been speechless, really, because my family is a very, very small f family. We're almost extinct. Uh, my father had one boy, which is me, his brother had two daughters, and therefore there were no Udans left. Uh, and so um, um, I, I'd been told stories about this famous uncle in Sheffield, but really not, not much about... In fact, I don't recall anything being said about, about football. But I've always been proud of the name because it's uh, such an unusual name, and I've never met anybody with the same name. How much of this all clicked into place with you when the trophy resurfaced? Because soon after that, 
that finally in 1867 it, it disappeared uh, and it came to light uh, up in Scotland in the 1990s. That was a remarkable moment in my life. I remember uh, an article ap appeared in the um, Financial Times, it was the one I saw, and it was a friend of mine who phoned me up to say, there's the UDEN Cup here in the Financial Times. And it sort of went from there, and it, I, I was sort of completely amazed because I hadn't realised that there'd been a cup which had been stolen and, oh, sorry, I don't know if it's stolen, but lost. Um, and so the whole process for me gathered momentum and has done over the years. Uh, unfortunately, like a lot of people, business interferes with things like this. So I, I had great spurts of activity trying to find out about him. Yeah. And uh, Well, Hallam FC were the winners of the uh, Uden <laughs> Cup and, and they actually uh, mm. purchased uh, the, yeah. the, the, the trophy, and I believe it's now worth £100,000. It's been valued, it was valued well, on uh, the Antiques Roadshow on TV. It was, and I've also had a conversation with somebody who said, look, it's worth at least a quarter of a million. That's the opinion. Now, it's what someone will pay for it, but it'll never be sold, but, uh, but certainly it's... Uh, it's, it's worth a great deal it, more than the value of the silver and the gold uh, in it, because it is, of what and it and stands for. And I think it's... I think it's great for Sheffield actually because uh, um, I, uh, I've spent a lot of my time here in Sheffield. I'm not sure whether I dare admit the football club that I've been a supporter of for many, many years. But, uh, but I've had many happy times in Sheffield. And, uh, well, how pleased are you that now the Uton Trophy name uh, is going to come back into prominence? Uh, you are the ref .com is reenacting uh, the Uden Cup this summer. My opinion on this is that uh, I think in principle it, it's a great idea. Uh, I think if Sheffield can, can take advantage of the original Uden Cup in some way um, and for the benefit of Sheffield as a whole, uh, I'd be hopeful in fact that, that it could evolve into something um, which is uh, which will build on the significance of the of the Udan Cup and uh, anything that uh, has my name, shall we say, Udan attached to it. It's just a joy for me uh, to, to sort of see these things happening. And uh, in fact, you'll be uh, presenting to the winners. Well, I'm certain. <laughs> Jock hasn't made it easy. This is Jock War, the founder mm, of You Are the Ref. Yes, he has, he's decided to organise an event when I'm not here. Uh, so I've undertaken, to, in, in principle certainly, I, I will try to be here. Uh, but it carries uh, your family name proudly. Yes. And also draws attention to little known facts about football mm. outside the city of Sheffield and even within the city. Mm. A lot of what we talked about here isn't known, is it? I guess it isn't. I mean, I think it, 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 it is a fact that, uh, that the, um, the centre, shall we say, of football with the FA Cup and and uh, and a number of clubs joining the the various leagues, gravitated rather away from Sheffield and and South Yorkshire to other areas, um, uh, in, and I think uh, this might help to just redress the balance a little bit and say to people, hang on, you know, it, it all started here, and uh, you know, we we'd like to. Uh, perpetuate the good things that have come out of the development of football all over the world and uh, I would certainly hope that Sheffield as a city certainly big enough could uh, could actually accomplish that yeah it's our uh, game can we have our trophies back please this as you said this is where it all began all those years ago and uh, so I'm certainly hopeful and I'll try to uh, do my best if, if I can help uh, to help it to, to bring it along and I'm proud to have been part of this community here um, and I can't believe that all these years later uh, I wouldn't like to say how old I am but I think you can guess but uh, I can't I can't believe that after all these years uh, here I am talking about the heritage of of football and uh, it's just wonderful I think. Mm. Glenn thanks very much it's been a pleasure to talk to you thank you. You're welcome.